All right. Hello, everyone. It is time for uh, Noel Playing Games uh, Season 1.5, Season 2, Season whatever, Dead Laws. Uh, this is our next campaign. Our Weird West uh, Savage Worlds Deadlands, I think is the name of the system. Yeah, uh, Deadlands. Campaign. We, uh... We have put a lot of work into this over the past six months. Has it been six months since Cave Escape? Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, that's a long. That's a long time to go without tabletop. Um, I hope everyone is doing well. Um, we have a cool show ahead for you today. Um, does everyone want to introduce themselves in the order of the cards? Maybe that would be the best yeah so let's go uh, left to right hi it's me i'm back it's boring keith <laughs> slash marrow slash argo i'm playing argo now i was jet last time remember jet that's that's jet all i got <laughs> you did it jet was the strongest character in our last campaign physically possibly argo's not there you go <laughs> speaking of lynn <laughs> I am the new strongest character. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my name is Horbuns, aka Dax. That's just my name. I'll be playing Lynn, the uh, very big Wolverine Mountain Man's. Look forward to it. All right, Conrad. Excellent. Yeah, uh, I'm Illusory Wall. Uh, you might know me potentially from Dark Souls YouTube stuff that I normally do. Uh, very excited to be back for this. And I made it to this character called Conrad, and he's a duck. <laughs> all right george uh hi i'm george i'm playing nicodemus the wolf uh he is a bit of an occult character so um try to play a traditional spin on a paladin in a wild west situation so i'm excited to see how this goes as an experiment uh i have written for a few vn projects uh but nice to see you all all right all right uh, hi, I'm Toaster, Toaster Williams. It's a pleasure to see you all again. Last time, uh, last time I played Sandals Bueller, uh, in, in Cave Escape proper. Um, this time I am playing Mysterious Stranger Taslin Beck. So, uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing how this campaign goes. Um, I wrote the lore and I guess... I don't know if I can claim all of the credit for it, but I think my official title for this campaign would be like scenario writer, setting writer, <laughs> maybe. Uh, I wrote the setting for this campaign. I, I read the cool. rules today. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> all right, then we have Chance. Yeah, well, I'm I'm Marty. You might have seen me play Grayson in the previous season in Cape Escape. Uh, I am playing Chance the Cheetah, a degenerate gambler, and um, hopefully this is going to be a great time. Uh, and I'm Ka. I'm running the, the whole GM wheel from up here on top of the table. It's very comfy up here. And I think everyone will be happy to very clearly hear Ka has a new microphone. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Hey, we got production value now. We let's got a go. budget. <laughs> uh, oh. Before we start, let's just really quickly shout out to, uh, you know, I don't have a, like a list of names or anything, but we have all of our lovely patrons that make this show possible over on patreon.com slash Noel playing games. Uh, this is what allows us to fund these shows. This show is very expensive to produce. Uh, it, it's over thousands of dollars, uh, obviously, and it's not just microphones getting upgraded. It's art assets and uh, writing time and and music and, you know, all sorts of little assets and things like that that we might possibly need. Um, you know, the Patreon goes to subsidizing the cost of that so that we can keep doing it for you all. So, uh, so yeah, anyway, uh, I think... That's it for introductions. Is there anything else anyone wants to plug before we get started? The artist. <laughs> Did we say the artist yet? Uh, let, let's talk about uh, our art team. We have Aria Quiz, who did all of our background and character art for this campaign and this lovely table here. He has done so much work for this. I am so proud of him. Uh, and our music is, again, courtesy of everyone's friend, Kevin McLeod. 
Yeah, wonderful. If you have played literally any visual novel in English, <laughs> you have heard Kevin McLeod's music. If uh, you have watched any YouTube videos featuring cute animals, you have heard yeah. Kevin McLeod's music. 100 percent accurate uh so thank you to all the, the work that our creative uh our creative team of area currently has done um and then obviously uh, i think it's worth shouting out that Ka was the one who assembled the virtual tabletop uh the foundry uh module that we are using uh Ka has done an Im immense amount of work on making this playable and legible not only for us but for you viewers so uh, thank you very much, Ka, for all of the hard work you put into not only making and writing this campaign, but uh, making the system function so that we can play it. <laughs> oh, it's been fun. All right, you guys ready to jump into things? It's now time yeah. for the most stressful part of the campaign where people are called up one by one to present in front of class. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> But before we get to that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to read through my spiel here. So I want to welcome everyone officially to the second season of No Playing Games for our second campaign, Dead Laws. Uh, this campaign does take place in the same universe as Cape Escape, but more than 100 years in the past. So we'll be exploring completely different cast of characters this time around. As is now tradition, we are dri diving straight into a new system none of us have played before, including me, the GM. So that'll be a fun time as we <laughs> learn things as we go. We will be sure to make lots of fun mistakes. Uh, this time around, we're exploring the Weird West genre using Deadlands as our rule set on the Savage World system. We got cowboys and cryptids in equal measure here. It'll be a good bit crunchier than the rules light fear itself system we used last season for Cape Escape. So we might take a more slower methodical approach to the mechanical side of things while we have more fun options at our disposal for things like combat and skill situations. Ah, I'm so excited. So without further ado, let's take a trip back in time to the year 1904. What a banger year, y'all. Uh, good, good old Teddy Roosevelt was on track to win his second term as president. We have the World's Fair going on in St. Louis. Somebody invented the ice cream cone this year. It was a good time. Is Teddy Roosevelt a bear? I was about to ask the same damn question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you fucking Bull know Moose. it. That, 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 that's why they uh, they made the, uh, the, the plush bear fad after him. <laughs> But down on the southwest frontier, with the age of the cowboy dying out, trouble had struck in a little place called Southpaw. You see, there used to be a town here, a little mining town, founded in the height of the California gold rush, and flooded with folks, desperate to strike it rich. As was the case with many such a town, the only folks to really turn a profit were the lenders and the vendors that were exploiting those would-be prospectors. By the time 1904 itself rolled around, the town had dwindled just shy of the triple-digit population. Everyone who could get out did, and all that were left were the truly desperate and destitute. Then the town fell to the other side. On June 22nd, 1904. The sun failed to rise in the town of Southpaw. Panic quickly spread through its citizens as they soon realized they seemed to be cut off completely from the outside world. The roads out of town became warped and uncertain the further one ventured from town, and the desert scrublands all around them seemed to be twisted into unrecognizable alien landscapes. Even the sky itself was awash with strange colors and impossibly large silhouettes gyrating with unsettling movements in the far distance. In the sunless month since the town has fallen, there have been numerous reports of strange creatures being sighted in the area. Hideous monstrosities the like of which should not tread upon God's green earth. And here they are. Over half the town's population has gone missing since the fall. Many of them rode out to try and find signs of life among nearby towns or simply get a lay of the land and see what was going on around them. Those who came back were change or didn't come back at all. 
Others have simply gone missing without a trace, or worse yet, leaving behind signs of incredible violence and copious viscera in their own homes. A strange illness now spreads through the town, crimson pustules that burst with black ichor spreading amongst the citizens, and the town's food supply are starting to spoil and fester much faster than they rightfully should. Even the houses are sick, infested with all manner of mold and decay, much like the folks hunkering down inside them, seemingly resigned to slowly rot away with the town itself. Now amidst all this doom and gloom, there's at least a few glimmers of hope still clinging on, just waiting for an opportunity to shine. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of them. Now, uh, I figure the best way to pick which one we should look at first is to let the cards decide. Ooh. So all my players, all my favorite players, that's all of you. Uh, up at the top right of our interface, we have a tab called Card Stacks. And you should see a uh, card stack there that's called Dead Laws. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. You do not have sufficient permission to view this sheet. No, let me fix that. <laughs> Let's see. All player. You should. Not the Dead Laws deck. The one that's just called Dead Laws. Oh, uh, I see it. I'm it says a fool. no cards present. Yep, yeah, that should be right. I made a grave mistake. <laughs> yeah, the Dead Laws deck is the deck itself, and then it draws to the Dead Laws hand. So, I'm going to draw the first card, and we're going to see who goes first. Let's see. Draw from the Dead Laws deck. Draw one card from the top. And I'm going to hit draw. And it looks like the first card we drew is chance. What are the chances? <laughs> Ooh. Someone's a cheater. <laughs> <laughs> you have to cheat to get this far ahead. All right. So first, we'll take a look at what's cooking in the Southpaw Sheriff's office. Here we find one of the town's newcomers, slowly rousing from a nap I don't think he expected to take, sprawled out in one of the town's only two holding cells. Chance, why don't you go ahead and describe yourself for us? Oh man, Chance the Cheetah. He's <laughs> um, now about 5'11", 6 foot, somewhere in that range. Mm -hmm. uh, Mostly yellow coloration in his fur, a little bit of white and black in his markings. Um, typically dressed fairly nicely for uh, for the Western environment and never without his telltale goggles, which I have no idea if he managed to keep them in this holding cell. Oh yeah, you still got them. Fantastic. All right. Chance, you don't quite remember how you got here, but you have an absolutely splitting headache. Looking out through the bars, you see a familiar sight, a, a portly possum staring back at you. Or rather, he's actually staring at a pistol that's laid out on his desk, wringing his paws nervously as he studies it. It's, it's Sheriff Stilton, the poor boy. <laughs> now, Chance, you've had your run-ins with the town sheriff before. You probably had run-ins with a lot of sheriffs in a round of town. A lot of towns, truth be told. But... In all your time cheating your way across the West, this has to be the downright dumbest, fattest, and most yellow-bellied sheriff you ever did meet. And he's got a weird habit of saying yeehaw when he's nervous. And he's always <laughs> nervous. Uh, meowdy sheriff? Uh, this startles him. He goes, oh, ye ye yeehaw! Oh, oh, you're awake! Oh. I'm, I sure am glad I didn't have to bury you. Bur bury me? Sheriff, you mind telling me what I'm doing in here? Oh, you you don't remember nothing what, what happened to you? Oh, it, it was terrible. You got yourself into a bar fight with old Rick, being old Rick Ryder down at the meat wagon. I he don't, I don't rightly remember none of that. He must have hit you upside the head something fierce if you don't remember the deputy bringing you back here last night. Nope, I don't remember it at all, and I, I don't know rightly why Rick would be mad at me. Oh, I don't know either. I didn't get the details. He decided to leave. 
That, uh, that, that strikes you as odd. He just decided to leave jail. Decided to leave? Decided... Can I leave? Um, I, I suppose, as long as you don't threaten me like, like Rick did. He said he's going to beat me unmerciful and throw me down the stairs. Now, Sheriff, you know I never, ever would threaten you for anything. I might oh. ask you to play a game of cards. Well, that's awful kind of you. Uh, but I, I ain't got no money left to, to be playing cards with. All I got is my gun and my badge. I don't have any bullets for my gun, but it's 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 still a weapon of in, intimidation. Yeehaw. Intimidating. I, it would be more intimidating if it had some bullets. Sheriff, do you need a loan? Oh, are, are, are you offering me a loan? I mean, I can loan you some money to buy some bullets or I can loan you some bullets. Either way works, Sheriff. Oh, well, maybe, maybe that's something we should work out another time. So, t- let me tell you what, let me let me get you on out of here. And let's say, um, it, oh, oh, you got an awful welt on your head. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Do I? Do you? Do you have a mirror? Um, no, I, I don't have a mirror. I, I think Rick took it with him because he he wanted to look at those weird little boils that are growing on his face now try to adjust my hat to like cover the well did this did this ow did this do it yeah yeah i i I think that might be what happened you know uh i i heard uh, the hero of southpaw is the one who done saved you and took down me and old rick Ryder. that's why both of you was unconscious and had to get drawn back here the hero of southpaw himself oh yeah the hero of southpaw himself yeehaw uh (laughs) Maybe you should go give him your thanks and uh, apologize to Mortadella for beefing on her turf while you're at it. You can uh, get two birds and one stone, however you'd say that. You know, I think that sounds like a fine idea, Sheriff. Let me go track down Argo and and uh, give him my thanks and find out what actually happened. All right. Well, do you just be careful with that being old Rick Ryder. That bull's got a chip on his shoulder the size of a cow pie. I mean, if I have my way, I won't see him again, but I don't think I can right avoid him since we can't really leave. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's a good point. Well, stay, so stay safe out there, Mr. Chance. Yeehaw. <laughs> Thank you kindly, Sheriff. And then he lets you out of the cell and you are free to go. And Chance, why don't you hit draw on that deck for me and we'll <laughs> see who ends up going next. Arkham with a smile. <laughs> Looks like Lynn. Ooh, Lynn. Ooh. All right. Let's get rid of uh, Sheriff Stilton there. All right. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, the lumbering figure of a tremendous wolverine clad in thick leather hides can be seen hauling lumber towards the town church. Now, go ahead and describe Lynn for us. So, my vision of Lynn is just the biggest Wolverine you've ever done seen. Um, you can tell just by a quick glance that he is not a people person. Um, you mentioned uh, just clad in leather from his time spent out in the wilderness and far away from the niceties of society. Uh, quite frankly, does not belong in town, but due to certain circumstances, found himself here. Um, about 6'4", 290. Oh, big. And just never in a good mood. <laughs> All right. So, Lynn, you've been kind enough to lend a helping hand to folks around town ever since it fell to the other side. Doing odd jobs around town, manual labor, hauling lumber like you are today. On this particular day or night, it's hard to tell nowadays, you've been asked to bring some lumber on down to the church. Weren't too easy to find usable timber, what with the very houses in Southpaw starting to fester and rot the way they are. But you're a woodsman of high caliber, you know where to find some wood. Arriving back at the church, (laughs) <laughs> with your uh, with your lumber in tow, you're met with the macabre visage 
of Sister Alice. She's oh. a recent addition to Southpaw. <laughs> one of one of the last few to arrive before it fell to the other side. The poor goat looks like she hasn't slept in weeks. She's clutching a rifle for dear life as she stares in the middle distance, not even really reacting when you approach. You're not ever sure where she got that thing, but you can't imagine she knows how to use it. <clears throat> Evening, sister. Oh. Where'd you want this? Oh, you're alive. Okay, um, leave it here. It'll be useful for the cross. Where's here? She uh, points with one hand towards uh, the side of the chapel, just indicating you should st uh, stack it up against the side of the building. Very nonchalantly, just like heft it off my shoulder. Mm, thank you. You are doing the Lord's work. The faithful are doing the Lord's work. I don't see no Lord down here. Don't give me any of that. Uh, his light is far from us now, but she uh, looks down at her gun. A greater darkness is coming. I have to stand watch for it. Oh, and oh. what? You're going to shoot it with that? It's kind of points at the gun. Uh, it is the Lord's work that moves through this vessel. I have no will in that regard. But there is one more thing you could do for me if you're still in the mood to help. I'm not, but I'll help. What you got? She, she uh, takes out a cloth bundle that's wrapped up tightly and passes it to you. This needs to go to Mortadella at the meat wag. You'll deliver it, won't you? Uh, is this just something big enough that I can hold in one hand? Yeah, it's, it's a, like, uh, football size-ish. It's a cloth bundle. It's kind of warm to the touch. Uh, I sniff at it. Um, but what the hell is this? Give me a notice check. We're going to make our first <laughs> oh, check of the game. Great. So if you double click your card, you can open your character sheet. And on the right. left, you'll see your list of skills. You can click the, <laughs> the die next to notice to roll it. And I'll bring up a window and you can hit roll at the bottom. Let's do it. All right. Uh, I noticed the hell rolled, out of it. You rolled your dice privately. <laughs> 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 Uh, uh, it was a six, but let me see. I can do it again if you want. Uh, I, I believe you. Uh, but uh, at the bottom of that window, you can uh, set it to private or public roles. Yeah, I did that earlier, but I forgot to set it back. My bet. We got it. We fixed it. All right. So with a six, you recognize a familiar coppery scent to this bundle. Uh, it smells like blood. Uh, I think that Lynn just sighs. Sure. I don't even care at this point what you're doing, but... Please don't. See, it gets to where it goes. Don't open it yourself. It is not for your eyes. I gathered. Thank you. And uh, with that, she motions for you to take your leave. I'm already walking away before she does that. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> she is moisturized so, and thriving and in her lane. <laughs> uh, as you head through town, um, you make your way through the darkened streets towards the place you were instructed to go to. Let me get rid of her off of there. And as you pass through the center of town, you see the strange ever-burning banner that has been present in the center of town ever since the town fell. Let me, uh, let me hand that out to you, player. Ooh. It's Ooh, a strange... A model. Yeah, you do! It's a strange purple banner with a white design upon it. Uh, and there's a notice tape to it, but... Most people haven't bothered to read it. 
Well, I sure can't. Yep, so that'll be for someone <laughs> else to deal with. <laughs> My god. <laughs> but now that you're uh, out of the line of sight of the uh, the good sister Alice, do you take a peek inside that bundle, or are you going to deliver it sight unseen like a good boy? How tightly wound up is it? It's not particularly tightly wound up. Are, are you wondering if, like, you could take it? What if I, like, accidentally drop it and uh, it comes slightly? I mean, you you, you certainly can uh, try and pull that bluff. <laughs> yeah, why not? All right, let's see what's inside. So opening it up and taking a look inside, you see the delivery. And let me hand that out. Has anyone ever successfully completed a delivery quest without opening the thing? Oh. Uh, inside, oh. it looks Yummy. like a person-sized heart. The, the the size of a heart you would find in a person. And <laughs> it's fortuitous that you opened it right in front of the banner here because you notice that is the exact same symbol burned into this organ that is on that banner. Huh. Probably unrelated. Probably unrelated. But uh, it's not particularly bloody, and it is still a little bit warm, which is strange. It's not but beating, oh well. is it? No, oh, it's not beating. No. Okay. It is That's inert. good. But uh, you're going to wipe the dirt off it, spit shine it, put it back <laughs> in the cloth bundle. <laughs> Just kind of very hastily wrap it back up and pretend like I didn't see what I saw. All righty. So... After that, uh, go ahead and draw me the next card. Sure thing. Conrad! Okay. Hello. Let's see. Uh, also on Main Street, just a, a little bit further down. We follow the movements of a bespectacled mallard hoofing it hurriedly into town from the outskirts. Now, uh, go ahead and describe Conrad for us. Conrad, he's from Pennsylvania. He's a land surveyor, and uh, he moved to Southpaw just shy of a couple years ago. Um, he got a job operating a sort of communications outpost at the edge of town. Uh, it was a government job where he got to keep to himself. Uh, he had a couple co-workers he was with, but... Um, yeah, he's, he's definitely someone who keeps to himself and is very private. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, Conrad, you woke up today to the sounds of creaking metal and found that some strange warped vegetation that's been spreading across the land has started to climb up the heliograph tower you were left behind to monitor. Quite a shock, to be certain. Mm. Now you're, you're heading into town. Are you, are you looking for to help to deal with that? You just... Getting out of dodge. What? What's your mo here? Huh. Well. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna look for whoever is seen. Uh, the last time I'd been in town was a couple weeks. Uh, I came here shortly after the sun first went down, but I already noticed that people were getting weird. So I was kind of just trying to wait things out uh, with the rations that I had at the tower. But uh, yeah, it looks like th things started going south there. So I'm just crossing my fingers and hoping I can find anyone uh, who seems sane. Well, I don't know about saying, but you do hear someone as you head into town. Uh, you hear a blood-curdling, high-pitched scream as you pass by the apparently not-so-vacant printing office that stands boarded up on the edge of Main Street. It sounds like there might be trouble inside. Do you want to check it out or keep on your merry way? Damn it, I shouldn't be doing this. Uh... Damn it. Yeah, I guess <laughs> I should go take a look. All right. So let's see. Let's get inside the print office. Inside the defunct office of the Mind's Eye Gazette, once a reliable source of local news that's turned into a trashy tabloid reporting of all manner of desert cryptids and conspiracies, you see a large, heavy word, wooden crate with a tarp thrown over it in the center of the room. Sitting on top of the crate, as if he's trying to weigh it down, is a small fox boy. 
Hey, uh, what, do you need help with that? What's going on there? Oh, that that weren't me that uh, doing the screaming, mister. That that was uh, what I caught here. Uh, and he moves for you to get close so he can, like, whisper something soft and softly to you. And he says, I finally caught one. Um, w- what is it that you caught? He uh, points to the conspiracy board behind him where you see the word goblins? Question mark? Uh, written, scrawled on the wall. And he says, I got me a goblin, a real live one. Okay, I should probably be immediately concerned with that. But um, have you been doing research this whole time? Y- yeah. Oh, wait, say, you're, you're one of the government eggheads from up in the radio tower, ain't you? Uh, yes. Yep. Yep. That that is me. That's me, I guess. Oh, yes. That explains why I ain't seen you around. All the adults around town are just ready to keel over and die. They ain't trying to fight back or understand what's going on at all. Uh, yeah, I can appreciate laying low, but, um, I think trying to understand what's going on might be the best strategy here. What, what have you found? This? Well, uh, like I said, it, it's a goblin. And, uh, as he says that, you see the box beneath him, like, rumble and shake, and you hear growling and whimpering noises coming from it. He's like, I don't, I don't know how long I can keep it held down, though. Uh, could, could you go get the, the hero southpaw for me? You, you know where he hangs out, right? At, down at the saloon? Oh, you're talking about uh, the man named Argo? Yeah, yeah. I guess we could go find him. Uh, yeah, he'll know what to do. He's fought all sorts of critters. I heard he, he uh, like, sucked a chupacabra dry because it sucked him. Uh-huh. Okay, they might have been referring to something else, but uh, sure. Uh, I'll, I'll go grab him for you, and uh, can you really hold that on your own while I go get, get him? Yeah, I'll probably be fine. Uh, give me a notice check. <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, you're good at notice. Public rule. All right, your dice exploded. You got an 11. That's not a success. That's a raise. So that means you get more than what you would normally get just from succeeding on a roll. It's effectively a critical. So not only do you notice that this boy is not heavy enough to keep whatever's down there down there, you do notice that there's tons of parts laying around you could use to build some sort of contraption to keep this box tied down, at least for the moment. Let's go for it. I was doubting that getting Argo was a, was a good idea. So, yeah, I would, I would love to help uh, lock this thing up, whatever it is. All right. So um, I'm not going to have you roll for it because sure. your <laughs> your notice was so good. You just find the stuff. Would this be you... under repair, maybe? Yeah, actually. So let, give me a repair and you can do this because of your MacGyver. OK, yeah. let's give it a shot. Another exploded die. And I'm, a what raise. can I say? I'm, I'm good at what I do. <laughs> All right, the egghead's in his element, everybody. Oh, uh, this is great. Um, so you managed to like construct like a lever system that will actually keep this thing held down with its own weight. The more it struggles, the more it gets pushed down. Um, and because of your rays, you can do that and take the tarp off if you want to see the creature inside. Do you Absolutely. Know? Yes, that tarp is coming right off. All right. Uh, let me go fetch uh, the creature that is inside of here. Looking Sp- exploding through... Exploding dice are out of control. <laughs> These exploding dice are nuts, man. Uh, looking through the slats of the wooden crate... Uh, you see a creature that sort of looks like a really mangy little dog, oh. but its proportions are so wrong. It's smaller than this child, but has like adult proportions to its body. It's I'm very upset. upsetting. Uh, it's hideous. And the creature snarls and whines in equal measure as you expose it to the light. It doesn't seem to like the uh, lights that are in here. And it whines and says, Please! Hungry! 
Huh. Uh, so, uh, son, what, what, what's your name again? Uh, Kit, mister. And, uh, uh, who are you? Uh, I'm Conrad, sorry, uh, for the late introductions here. Um. Oh, heck, sure is swell to meet you, Conrad. Oh, sorry, pardon my swearing, mister. I, I'm not worried about that. Uh, these things, do you know what they eat? Uh, let's see, according to my research, uh, he, uh, starts, he goes over to the board now that you've freed him up, he no longer has to sit on the crate, and he, uh, drags his finger across, uh, several papers. I, I learned my letters from, uh, watching, or reading the old, uh, the tabloids left here. Let's see, uh, according to my research, they eat toes. <laughs> ah, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> um... Yeah, I'm afraid we might have to leave him hungry for a while. I don't think there's anything we can do to help that. The the creature shakes against its box, even though you have it pinned down to really tight. And it says, please, toes. <laughs> no. Half of chat's uh, like, it's like me for real. <laughs> no. <laughs> huh. All right, I'm going to conduct my own ex- little experiment. I'm going to try. I have a canteen. I'm just going to, like, try pouring some water into its open mouth <laughs> and see how it reacts. All it's right. a Quentin Tarantino monster. <laughs> <laughs> so the water goes in and kind of just like drips out the side like it doesn't know how to swallow water. Uh, okay. It doesn't know what you're doing to it. Well, please. Yeah, can't say I didn't try. Uh, I mean, obviously, <laughs> this thing's a danger to people, so I feel like we should probably just put it out of its misery. But uh, man. It's it's secured well enough for now, so uh, maybe we'll let other people in the town figure out what to do with it exactly. Yeah, that that's a good idea, Mister. Uh, maybe Argo will know more about it. Okay, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna want to pick your brain over what you've learned, you know, during this time because uh, yeah, any any information you've gleaned about what's happening here could be useful. Oh, absolutely! I'm an open book, Mister. Excellent. All right. And while those two are discussing the finer points of goblin care, um, go ahead and draw the next card for me. Ooh, yes. Uh, I'm upset in that, like, 80s Henson way that I haven't been for a while. (laughs) (laughs) That's the vibe I wanted. I just immediately had the feeling of, like, that I had when I first saw those creatures in the labyrinth that pull their heads off, and they started giving it the Chamberlain voice, and I'm like, no! (laughs) Well, uh, guess what? Whose turn it is now? It's Argo! So let's get rid of these two. And move on over. And check out what's happening meanwhile down at Mortadella's Meat Wagon. Oh. A combination butchery and bar that's the last place in town still serving food and drink. Here we see the hero of Southpaw himself sitting at one of the establishment's tables. Go ahead and describe Argo for us. Argo is medium build, like suspiciously medium build, but he's the hero of Southpaw. He's the the writer of wrongs, the protector of the innocent, uh, dashing good looks, most dangerous person in town, a, a proper larger than life figure, except for the, his actual size and that he is not larger than anyone. Maybe chance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, across from him sits Bertram Softbottom. Sharing the table with you, uh, this up-and-coming novelist has traveled out west in search of tales of intrigue to inspire his next masterpiece. He's finally managed to pin you down for an interview, one he paid you for in advance, months (laughs) ago. (laughs) Mr. Martindale, I hope you don't think it rude that I take dictation for this interview. Uh, by all means. Oh, don't worry, I'll let you have a read over my notes when we're done. <laughs> yeah. All right. You've been keeping rather busy, haven't you? And you get the, the distinct impression that he's still a little miffed that you've been dodging him <laughs> all this time. Uh, protecting the town from the foul creatures lurking out in the dark. Any particular creatures of note you've tussled with? Anything with, like, 
slimy tentacles or big slavering moths. Those sorts of stories are selling like hotcakes back in New England these days. Oh, well, you know, uh, a hero gets busy when God takes the sky. Uh, been missing that for a while. <laughs> God takes the sky, yes, yes. For context, if, I don't know if this is established, but the sky is not the sky anymore. <laughs> yep, it's it's weird out there. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no, there's no limit of the tentacles around here. It's really just an endless flight. Cut one off, two grow back. Uh, someone could write a story about that. Oh, fascinating, fascinating. But uh, back before all this eternal darkness nonsense, you already had quite the reputation for busting up bandits and ragamuffins across the whole of the West. Isn't that right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Smouthpaw is just this small, vulnerable, vulnerable little town, and someone just had to take care of it. Well, is that why you decided to settle down here, of all places, uh, as its protector? Absolutely. There's uh, no shortage of bi-weekly vagabonds of the month, and uh, that's not. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> it's fine. We'll just assume he doesn't know the difference. <laughs> it sounds like something Argo would say, yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. And if there wasn't someone to keep this, this whole place standing, then who would else would... Who else is going to serve suspiciously mixed blood and whiskey? <laughs> uh, yes, yes, uh, quite the interesting selection of beverages here. You see, he has just water himself. Now, surely all the accolades and the praise must get old eventually. So tell me, nope. is there anyone... <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there's more to life than just that. Now tell me, is there anyone special in your life you're looking to settle down with? I'm sure there's any number of formal damsels in distress knocking down your door. Well, I'm not one to kiss and tell. I'd like to kiss some more. Aww, isn't that sweet? He writes a big question mark after that. And as the See, interview I drags on... Probably need to roll that I, the lie or something. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, give me that. <laughs> Let's see. Give me that persuasion. It's a persuasion. Uh, yep. Let's see here. There's no uh, bespoke skill for lying. It's just a form of persuasion in this system. Uh, shit, I, I forgot how to do this. Uh, so we click on that click on the persuasion, uh, persuasion die. Yep. And then oh, the die. There we go. I found it. And then no modifiers. Yeah. No modifiers. Eh. Uh, All right, five. That's a success. All right. Hmm. A gentleman doesn't kiss and tell, I suppose. And uh, as the interview drags on, uh, more and more of the patrons throughout the saloon are starting to settle into an uncomfortable silence, staring daggers at Argo. <laughs> you, you can tell they're starting to get a little sick of your shit. Speaking of uh, people who might be getting sick of your shit, uh, why don't you draw another card for me? Uh... <laughs> Up at the uh, the, the Dead Laws Code Draw. stack from the top of the deck. Good old Argo. Women want him. Men want to be him. He wants men. <laughs> <laughs> you know the huge. All right. It looks like next up is going to be Nicodemus. All right. Coincidentally, also here in the tavern, back behind the bar, we see our current bartender on duty a white wolf by the name of Nicodemus. He's able to hear every word of this absolute embarrassment of an interview that's going on in front of him. So go ahead and describe Nicodemus for us. Right. Well, um, yeah. So Nicodemus is a tall white wolf. He's about six, three. Um, he's a little bit on the reedy side. Um, he very much likes to be a shoulder that people could lean on. He likes to support people in town, but better than supporting people, he likes people that can support themselves. So he's getting increasingly frustrated with the situation where everyone, there's just this odor of malaise that is like lingering around where everyone's sort of giving up and he's trying to keep things together. 
um, and try to find a way out of the town to try to bring more resources in. So um, he's very, very concerned with resource management. I see, I see. And as he's listening to Argo blather on in front of him, how does he feel about Argo? <laughs> Hmm, how does he feel about Argo? <laughs> <laughs> uh, kind of cute, want to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good vibe! That's Goals, w- one positive, one negative. We're one step away from the compliment sandwich there. <laughs> it's a compliment uh, pizza. <laughs> <laughs> the only topic is compliments. Uh, <laughs> A loud sigh perks your ears up as the proprietor of the establishment uh, arrives from the back room. Her uh, arms are full of uh, freshly ground sausage links that she starts stringing up overhead. It's uh, Mortadella, the uh, titular Mortadella of Mortadella's meat wagon. There he goes, getting them all riled up with his stories again. You believe the balls on this man carry on the way he does? about had it about had it i'm in the same boat here i swear ain't right the way he gets folks hopes up and just doesn't do anything with it well if you can get some hopes up at least that's something yeah that's half the puzzle i suppose people might be worse off if they were dying and sad about it so true yeah all right well Can you uh, grab me the meat pies from around back and bring them out? Full Belly should help calm folks down in case he gets them too worked up again. Sure thing, ma'am. All right. I feel like I just got (laughs) steel-manned. So as you uh, head on into the back room, uh, the noise of the busy bar calms down to an almost eerie quiet. Give me a notice check for Nicodemus. Sure. I'm a little heartbroken over the detail that the child believes in Argo. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know any better. The child and the sheriff with the mind of a child. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a five. That's a success. Um, for reference, your target number is typically four is what you're trying to hit for skill checks in this game. Might be adjusted by difficulty in some situations, but four is the standard. Got it. So as you head into the back, you see a little bit of rattling in the trap door in the bottom of the floor that leads to the storage cellar down below. Almost like someone just closed it, but there's nobody else in here. Mortadell has always told you to never take a look down there. She keeps it locked up tight, keeps the key with her at all times. It's kind of struck you as odd. Every once in a while, you can catch a whiff of a strange smell drifting up from down there. You want to investigate that, or do you got meat pies to handle? This looks like a food storage problem. Ain't right. Doesn't smell right. It sure Let's check it out. All right. Uh, you check it out. You notice the trap door isn't actually locked like it's supposed to be. You could open it up and take a look down inside if you want. I'll do that. All right. As you open up the trap door, you don't get like a whiff of foul air of rotting meat or anything like that. You smell lavender. Ain't that peculiar? Lavender. And looking down underneath, it looks like a wooden staircase leads down into a basement of some sort. You go down. So I think about lavender, I think about animal fat. That would be like a common, if you mix that with soda ash, that would be a common way to make soap. So is there any trace of anything normal like that? Let's see, you're smelling lavender, you're smelling something salty. That's about it. Nothing else is really (laughs) 
peek in your old factory <laughs> nerves. Right. Sure, I'll keep going. All right. Uh, heading down the stairs, do you close the trap door after you? Yeah. All right. Uh, thankfully, it doesn't like automatically lock when you shut it. You might have locked yourself down here. That would have been bad. No, that would be a trap door. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what's down there. Let me get my backrest open. Heading downstairs, you see a very strange room. Oh. Red tinted lighting is cast over this large, comfy cellar chamber that is draped with what may have at one point been rich silks, but many of them are in various states of soiling and disrepair. It's a very strange sight to see, and you're not sure what that pole in the middle is for, but it's got to have some purpose. Maybe it's load-bearing. And out of the corner of your eye, you see someone behind one of the curtains in the back of the room. Let me grab person. And that person sees you, too. Dibs. <laughs> ah. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know anyone would be down here tonight. Alright, Nicodemus is very confused now. <laughs> you, you've you seen this man before. Uh, as far as you're aware, he was a, a letter carrier. But you uh. haven't seen him in weeks. So you figured either he managed to get out of town before it fell, or he was probably one of the first to fall here in town. But now it looks like he might have been hiding out in the cellar in this strange room. And... Uh, you... Go ahead. I <laughs> say, so you are right there? Um, yes. Uh, did Mortadella send you down? Am I working tonight? Uh... <laughs> you know, let's just forget about this. Okay. Oh, yeah, sure. So, sure thing. Um, take this, I suppose, for next time. And he reaches out to a stack of handbills that are uh, on one of the side tables and hands you one. Uh, can I look? Yeah. Let me show this to players. There you go. The question of the day is, can Nico read? <laughs> can Nicodemus read? Uh, yes, he can. Yes, he can. Excellent. So he can read yeah. uh, this as much as he wants. All right. So Mortadel's Meat Wagon. The finest meat you'll ever meet. Look, one dollar. Feel, two dollars. Uh, paw service, five dollars. <laughs> Lip service, ten dollars. <laughs> Full service, twenty-five dollars. And then here is a list of, I assume, previous clients: Jeremy Hogswallow, <laughs> Richard, <laughs> uh, Richard Neversoft, very good. Billy Badcock, uh, Mister Polecat, Wolfram Notwood. <laughs> And uh, MF Sax. That's a uh, MT Sax. <laughs> NT Sax. M T. Oh. M T. Okay. M T Sax. M T. Yeah, M, M T. Your Sax. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm. yeah here, okay. here, as you can gather, mm. this uh, mm. must be what's on offer. Here is. These are these also cakes? Yeah. These are. Yeah. These aren't. These aren't clients. These look like the workers. Yeah. Interesting. That, that's about what you gather from that interaction. So, uh, as Nico is an employee here, or does it, has he known about this place? You had or, no idea about this. Uh, yeah, this is... This okay. is the strange downstairs storage that you were told to keep out of. Right, 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 right. So he's like, huh. <laughs> and we've been sort of... Uh, been kind of 
strung along with our resources, so he's kind of a little bit confused, and a little bit miffed, and a little bit, uh, just unsure of what's going on down here. I mean, it's clear what's going on down here, but, uh, hmm. Thank you very much. <laughs> Be seeing you. Definitely. All right, so you head back upstairs? Yeah. All right. That's it. Well, actually, before I go, is there anything uh -huh. that I can... Can I do a... Is there anything that I can notice in this room that might look off? Sure, you want to give me a notice to sweep your peepers around, see if anything looks yeah. out of place? Um, Phrasing. Because, <laughs> because also, we said that there is a bad smell, right? Um, a strange smell. Okay. Unusual. It, it might be that lavender, or it might be something else. It's balls. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking. What, what were those uh, white things on the? Would those be fungus on the wall? Uh, that, that's area where like the paint and plasters starting to peel away. Mm, okay, okay, okay. That's oh disrepair. Oh my god, I pay fifteen dollars to sweep your peepers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's see. Do, 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 Eep show do. wasn't on the menu, so I mean, it's free to look, I guess. No, yeah, look was one dollar. Oh. <laughs> All right, your uh, your wild die exploded there. That that's an eleven. So uh, not only do you get the good, the regular result, you uh, you get a raise there, and you notice that much like the rest of the town, this place is starting to come apart at the seams much faster than buildings should suffer wear and tear. But not nearly as bad as the buildings up on the surface. It's almost like the earth is insulating it from the deleterious effects of the other side. That's useful information. So it's almost like the sky could have some sort of connection with how fast things get exposed. That could very well be. Interesting. This, this has to have been the single most dangerous room to get a critical success at observing in. <laughs> <laughs> Don't roll a critical success when you're observing your hotel room. Don't. Don't do it. It's like a Jackson Pollock painting in here. <laughs> a critically notice is the large pole. <laughs> critically uh, notice is your bulge. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think right. we're done here. Thankfully, you didn't bring a black light. And I just say, I misread uh, Paul's ser service as raw service, and I was like, oh, you should probably be charging more for that. Yeah, that, that cost <laughs> extra. <man. laughs> All right. So let's let's head back upstairs. Let's see. Get that and get smooth. We call that in the business fan service. <laughs> All right, you're back upstairs in the saloon, um, and you hear call out from the back, meat pie, sweetie. All right, I gotcha. I go back and I get one. All right. Uh, these are like hand-sized pies, so you might need several. But uh, when you reach for the one on top of the stack, you notice a weird bulge. It, it, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> really? You, you, looked for, <laughs> you looked for pie, but you found cake. <laughs> well, I guess that's the second bulge I find. Yeah, right. sure did. And right. as you look at it, it almost looks like an air bubble at first, but the longer you look, the more you realize it's it's starting to move. It's uh, pushing and fits and spurts and starting to wiggle its way towards the center of the pie where that Ooh. hole descends down into it. It's got really adult really fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's quickly uh, crossing the areola of the pie. <laughs> I kind of I, I kind of get uh, our hostess here and I, I, I say I kind of lower my voice and I think meat, by, meat might be off. Or uh, some something might have, might have gotten into this one. So you take that out front and show her. Yeah, secretively. Or do you bring her in the back? I want to bring her in the back because I don't okay. want patrons to see this. That's a good idea. All right, so you you bring her in the back and she says, "Oh, what the hell is that?" And 
<laughs> that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Uh, and she leans in and is looking at it, and <laughs> as soon as the bulge gets to the center, a fat little bumblebee flies out of the center of the meat pie. Oh, and it wavers in the air, seeming to take a moment to get its bearings before it starts to sway and gyrate in front of you in unusual patterns. And Mortadella says, The hell's wrong with this bee? How'd it get in the start... pie? So I want to clarify, is this a bumblebee or is this a honeybee? This is a, a, a honeybee. I use the words interchangeably because I'm Got it. not smart. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh... So it seems like they got into the sugar. We need to keep this place locked tighter down. Huh. Darndest thing. You'd think I would have found it when I was uh, making the pies and pressing them out. Oh, well. Well, um, can you take care of that? You keep bees, don't you? Yes, I'm. Uh, you, you, like, put it in a jar or something? Poke holes in it? That'll do. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, fun with that. And then uh, she heads back out in the front and leaves you to tend to the bee. Um... With her gone, it starts making those strange movements again. Almost like it's trying to warn you. Give me a faith roll for Nicodemus. Ooh, four, the exact amount you needed. That was, that was close, you almost missed it. So, looking over the bee, watching it gyrate, watching it move with such intention, it reminds you of how the bees were moving just before the town fell. Like they were trying to warn you about something, something you just couldn't decipher. But now you get that sinking feeling in your gut that the bee is trying to warn you. Something bad is coming. I just tilt my hat and say thank you kindly to the bee. All right. And I'll put him in the jar. All right. After you do that, back I out am, in the... Go ahead. I am, I am going to keep the bee. Right, keep keep the bee. Uh, in the, you keep it in the jar? Yeah. All right, so you've got a bee jar now. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a thrown weapon. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> the jar with one B. <laughs> Not the B. Not, Not the, the B. <laughs> All right. So back in the front of the bar, out in the uh, more relaxed nature of the saloon itself, Lynn shows up, having been instructed to deliver a package here. And he does see Mortadella, the intended recipient of the package, over at the bar. Argo takes one look at Lynn and then front flips over the counter and <laughs> behind it and disappears. What the hell are you doing back here? I'm not here. <laughs> Gosh dang it. <laughs> she throws a towel over you. She's helping. <laughs> Uh, Frenemies. As you do that, Bertram's like, okay, I, I suppose we'll have to finish this interview another time then. <laughs> so, Lynn, uh, give me a notice check. Sure. You know what? You didn't notice that. You didn't see this very obvious muscle-in front flipping over the bar to hide from you. That yeah. I just I'm imagining the Scott Pilgrim like hopping through the window, yeah, like, through the window. Just flying. Yeah. I'm imagining the Lucian. Uh, How'd you know you were naked exactly. in my dream? <laughs> and front flip was overselling it, but it's like just diving forward from spar stool to behind bar and rolling onto the ground. Look, I'm distracted. I got heart in hand right now <laughs> that I don't Fair know about because I didn't open and see. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's better than wearing your heart on your sleeve, that's for sure. So you're here here to make your delivery, and you see a perplexed-looking Mortadella behind the bar. You see the disgruntled Bertram Softbottom uh, packing up his notes and not offering them for peer review like he promised. Uh, I think that Lynn just kind of goes past to the bar. Um, anybody that's in the way gets shoulder checked, um, and he just very gruffly plops down the package on the uh, bar top. You uh, so your shoulder check Bertram out of the way, and <laughs> true to his name, he bounces off his soft, soft bottom like he's made of flubber. He's like, oh, 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 oh my. The rumors are true. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, you you put that uh, parcel down for Miss Mortadella. Uh, it's from Sister Alice. Ringing the bells. Sister Alice uh, from the church, I suppose. I haven't had many dealings with uh, them in a while. What is it? They have dealings with you. Oh, well, that's told me told ominous. me not to look. It's I don't like honor. that at all. What what what's in the what's in there? I am sure I do not care. Uh, all right. She uh, takes it and slowly starts to unwrap it. Am I like, I'm, I think I'm, I think Lynn's just like staring at her as she does because he does know what's in there. Just kind of <laughs> like just waiting for her to react. <laughs> Best thing that's going on all night. And I'll pop that out again as a refresher and she doesn't do this like in a way that is stealthful. She does it like openly right on the bar top. So you can see her unfold it. Oh. Uh, Argo can probably even see it from where he's hiding if he's not buried under a sheet. Um, <laughs> Nicodemus can see it because he's nearby. I think about this time uh, Chance and uh, Conrad are gonna or, arrive to managing to finally make their way here just in time to hear mortadella scream bloody murder and collapse down backing into the corner behind the bar leaving on the bar top a not very bloody but still gory human-sized heart for all oh to see. dang there's a heart in there that's what? shocking. <laughs> <laughs> What's the meaning of this? What are you bringing in here? Look, I already told you. Sister Alice just told me to deliver this. Uh, There's some weird marking on it. Some scribbles on the back. I didn't know about the scribbles on the back, by the way. How could you bring that in here? You know what the rumors are. Do, do I? <laughs> uh, give me a common knowledge check. That, that's a fun skill you don't see in a lot of systems. A oh, my God. Oh, oh, my God. God. oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. I guess I do, yeah. Why? Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, Savage Worlds exploding dice. Anytime you roll the maximum value on a die, you roll it again. And it just keeps fucking going. He just rolled four fours in a row. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, yeah, you've definitely heard the rumors. There's rumors that she serves people. There's stupid rumors. You wouldn't get away with that, would you? There's no way. And she she's backed up into the corner and she says... Someone sees that. Oh, the, everyone sees that. They're going to think it's true. And uh, all around the bar, people have stopped drinking and are starting to stand. Chairs are squeaking against the ground as people get up. And Can I just, like, move paddling. in quickly to cover this back up? Sure. Can I also step in to, like, calm her down? Yeah, that's a very good idea. I, what would, I, would I have to roll something for that? Uh, you could give me a persuasion or a face. All right. 
Uh, that's a six. That that's pretty good. You uh, you managed to calm her down. What's what's that look like? What are you doing using your faith to help assuage this woman? I just like put I put my paw on her shoulder and I say, "I'll calm down." No one really believes that nonsense. Uh, thank you, darling. I I wish that were the truth, but rumors are persistent as a pig and shit. <laughs> and. Everyone knows it's all hogwash, but they're still gonna run their mouths. That's just the way people are. And speaking of running mouths, uh, let's find... <laughs> Someone else arrives at the tavern, at the saloon, at Mortadella's meat wagon, pushing the front doors open, coming in with a chip on his shoulder the size of a cow pie. It's the most punchable man in the world, say for Argo. It's Rip Rider. <laughs> I uh, kind of make myself small off to the side of the door because I hadn't quite made it up to the bar. Yeah, I think Conrad's probably in the same boat as yeah, well. 100%. This place is getting full. There, there's all of you here. There's like at least a dozen other folks here. And Rick Ryder pushes his way through and he's like, Quit the theatrics, woman, and get me a drink. Argo has shrunken further. <laughs> And Who's then, bigger? Uh, uh, Rick Ryder is pretty fucking big. I'm gonna say he's around six five. Okay. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna tell her to, I'm gonna tell her to go take a breather and I'll serve him. All right. Ah, I got you this time. Give me a shot of whiskey. Don't do yeah, yeah. funny with it. Slips a bee in the whiskey. <laughs> That's a whiskey bee. <laughs> it's psychedelic if you eat it. <laughs> <laughs> mm, that venom goes down smooth. All right. So uh, are you going to make him his drink as requested? Or are you going to fuck with him? I'll make him his drink. All right. So you, you pour a shot of whiskey for him. And he uh, he leans over the bar and says, you seen Argo around here? Unfortunately. How recently? Daggers. Daggers at Nico. <laughs> Daggers. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta settle up with them. Uh, do I do I see him? Do I see him on the other side of us? <laughs> uh, like yeah, on you're floor. on the same side of the bar, so I'm not even gonna make you roll. He's just laying on the bar with a towel thrown over him, motionless. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta like just look at him. <laughs> so you now, why would I waste my time looking after that fool? Hell. I suppose there's worse ways to spend your day, but uh, let me know if you see him. Like I said, we do gotta settle up. Mm-hmm. Where's the pay? Uh, for the drink, put it yep. on Argo's tab. Hmm. I'll let him know that. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Nico just feels pain in his shin as, as Argus is <laughs> poking him with a fork. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, af after that little uh, exchange, uh, he ends up uh, leaning over to Mortadella and he says, tell you what, how about you and me uh, go upstairs? help uh, calm your nerves and she is looking at him like she would rather rip him apart but I she doesn't here. say anything you absolutely can I think that uh, at this point Lynn just kind of very briskly like slams the fist down on the table is like how about you lay off it's not, it's not the night for that and then he is going to turn around and up the ante, giving it the same amount of energy you have and slamming his fist on the table and says, you looking to pick a fight, mister? You know, you mess with the bull, you get the, the shit beat out of you. <laughs> that's not how that goes. Right, that's how I'm going. So if you're going where I'm going, then your ass is grass. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I got that one. No. 
No? How's it go? Can I punch him? Yeah. <laughs> Argo's face is just in his hands. Uh, He's just shaking it back and forth like a kid. Can I be rolling? I just want to like punch him in the fucking face. Yeah, give me a fighting roll. I'm good at that. I say, hopefully, being good at that. <laughs> oh. All right, your uh, your uh, eight-sided die, your D8 uh, exploded and added a oh, one, yeah. so that ends up being a nine. Let's see, what do you need to hit him? I gotta open his sheet real quick. All right, that is a successful hit. It is not four over, though. If it's four over, it's a raise, which is essentially a crit, but that's just a regular hit for him. Okay. Uh, so you managed to punch him in the face. <laughs> Uh, let's see, how much damage does that do? <laughs> uh, do, do, do. You have Brawler. Mm -hmm. You roll a strength plus D4 when hitting with your face or feet. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so give me a strength roll. Sure. And then type slash roll 1d4 to add a d4. All right, that's a total of six damage you deal to him. Uh, that's a lot. That's enough to both shake and wound him. Uh, <laughs> uh, and as he is an extra, one wound means incapacitated. <laughs> <laughs> you clock yeah. this man and knock him flat on his ass in one punch. Hell yeah. And Rick Ryder goes down. <laughs> wow. Oh. Huh. He's down on the floor. Mess uh, with the Wolverine, get the... <laughs> you okay? You, you hear Bertram shout from the back, taking notes. What do you get? I have to know! <laughs> Argo not being able to see anything in particular, it just has that very specific sort of smug, relieved smile, like a, huh, as the two people he was hiding from beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> Let's be clear, one person got the shit beat out of them. Well, <laughs> I'm doing great. Yeah, you're He you're has fine. inconclusive data. <laughs> The, uh, the bar actually starts to uh, filter out as people are leaving, not wanting to get wrapped up in this, not after uh, last night's brawl between Chance and Rick Ryder. You know what, Rick Ryder seems to be a regular rattle rouser at this particular establishment. Do I notice the red spots on his neck? Uh, you do. Uh, you want to give me a heal check, healing. I, I think I do, yeah. Oof. Yeah, those look pretty bad. They might be infected, but you don't know what they are in particular. That that much eludes you. Unless, do you want to spend a Benny on that? You got three Bennies. Everyone you know starts sure. with three every session. Except for me, I get one. I just click it, right? Yep. All right. Um, so if you hit the Benny button on the roll that's in line in chat, I think it'll go ahead and re-roll it for you. There you go. That's a five. That's much better. So on second glance, you spend a little bit more time looking it over. This seems like it's that weird disease that's been going around ever since people fell to the other side. They get these red boils on them that seem to bleed a viscous black ichor. It's uh, mm -hmm. not a good look, and usually people disappear pretty soon after they get these. Yeah, ask Mortadella, you ever seen these on him recently? Well, I don't think he had them last night when he was going dukes with uh, the cheetah man over there. I think they're contagious. We should probably get them away from all the food. Yeah. I'll take care of that. Uh, thank, thank you kindly, Lynn. And, uh, could you get rid of this thing while you're at it? She uh, hands, like, doesn't want to touch it, but kind of like Jab, jab, pushes the the parcel towards you. I just uh, tuck that under one arm and grab uh, his leg with the other one, and start dragging him out. All right. So, 
we're gonna follow you out onto the street. <laughs> Great. Uh, let me bring up my street. Let's see, Bain Street. Did a single literate character ever see the writing on the heart? Uh, no, because more to tell it didn't look at it. <laughs> <laughs> so that is lost to the ages. Goodbye. <laughs> it's probably nothing. Well, I was there. Would I have seen it? Uh, did you want to take a look at the heart before it got taken away? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Give me a notice. That's a good notice roll. Yeah, you notice uh, as he's bundling up, it gets turned over. And you see not only the same symbol on the front that's branded into it that was uh, on the banner out in the center of town, you also see what looks like it's been carved in with a hot nail or something of similar width. The words, Father knows your shame. So that's weird. Why did you put that on the heart? Oh, well, away it goes. Outside. The darkness is known to play tricks on people out here in Southpaw, now that it's fallen to the other side. Lynn, you're used to the darkness. You like it away from the town where you can see the real night, where it gets real dark, dark enough to see stars. And even though there ain't really stars in this sky anymore. So the darkness doesn't really scare you none. But as you're dragging old Rick Ryder out the throne to the curb, you feel this strange sense of dread starting to build in your chest. You can hear your heartbeat thrumming in your ears. I'm sure this is mine, right? Sorry, what? I'm sure this is my heart beating, right? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. It's not the one in your hand. It's okay. the one in your chest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So as your heart is beating, you look out into the darkness and see a figure. Not so much emerge from the darkness, but coalescing from it. You see a mysterious stranger walking in from out of town. A canine figure. One that makes your blood run cold from just one look at him. Now, Beck, why don't you go and describe yourself for us? So, uh, Taslin Beck is, uh, he's the ghost of a boogeyman. He is a rigid and upright, uh, postured cowboy, uh, but every piece of him is ragged, uh, skin on bones, uh, cloth filled with holes and tears. Uh, you can't see any of his features because wherever the shadow falls on him, it is the purest black you have ever seen, as if almost a 2D figure made of ink spilled on a page. Um, he is walking with a very determined purpose. Um, it is unclear exactly where he's looking, uh, because once again, when the shadow falls over him, he almost becomes 2D. Uh, you can't see the contours of his face, but as he walks, uh, he begins to look up, and as the sort of, uh, uncanny shimmering light that comes down from the sky passes over him in the moonless night. You see his face, which is covered down the left side in ragged, smoothed burn scars. Uh, he is almost as if 
awaking from a dream, not completely aware yet of all of his surroundings. Uh, His face was down towards the ground as he watched the road he walked, and he seems to be surprised, uh, not startled, but like being shaken from sleep, unaware exactly where he is. Now, Beck, this is a very strange occurrence. You don't usually become lucid when you're dreamwalking like this. It almost makes you think you're back topside for a moment, but one look at the sky tells you you're still down in the other side. And there's a town here. That shouldn't happen. And you feel hunger clawing at your bones. Thankfully, there's a saloon nearby, a sort of place that a man like you can quench his most particular of hungers. I think the things that are going through Beck's mind at this particular moment, um, he is a quiet man under most circumstances, uh, but There is that sort of, I don't want to say crazed look in his eye, but uh, he's taking in information. Uh, He's looking around, trying to see where he is. He's been to other domains before. He has woken in the dream, no matter how rare. Uh, But this feels different from even that. It is very rare to feel as though one is topside when one is other side. So as he's getting his bearings, he scans the environment. Does he notice the flag? Give me a notice roll. All right. Let's see. Yes, absolutely. And that's a raise. So I'm going to say, in addition to noticing the very clear banner out in the center of town, not too far from the saloon here, you'd notice the note tape, well, pinned to it. And Mm -hmm. that catches your interest. Why don't you go ahead and read that for our audience? In this land and all the mortal meat who reside within it are hereby declared to be the protected property of Lord Barbados. Let it be known that any who sup upon his supplicants before the appointed time of his last supper shall immediately discorporate. That's a pretty big word. He had to mouth it. He had to spell (laughs) it out for sure. How's that one feel in your mouth? What's the mouth feel on that word? (laughs) Is it good? Is it good for you? I think Beck... Beck is not a learned man. He learned to read as an adult. Um, And he still has trouble with it, of course. But there's something pulling him to it. And there's something that's pushing him to be this way, to pay as close attention. It's like his pupil has grown the size of his full eye to take in as much light as possible because he sees the symbol on the flag. He is immediately hungry. (laughs) He's a hungry boy. And Lynn, you see this stranger walk up and approach the flag, studying it carefully. What's your reaction? How close are we? Uh, I'd say you're about a good 20 paces apart. He's out in the, the middle of the street there. Can you read? <laughs> <laughs> That's a valid question. It's 1904. And I guess it's a huge deal that you're seeing the first new person in a month. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) 
Uh. <laughs> so Beck immediately fires a warning <laughs> shot at him. Quick draw. Uh, I don't know if that's big enough to hit. Uh, but that that is uh you you don't hit your target, but you also sure. don't hit him. If you had rolled a critical failure, your warning shot would have accidentally become a hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He uh he fires a warning shot at the ground, like just you know, towards him. But his attention isn't towards Lynn at this moment. He's still burning his eyes almost on fire as they gleam in the darkness and, and pierce that strange veil shadowed over him, looking at the the symbol on the flag. Uh, it's all right. Most people can't read here either. either. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take no offense I, to it. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking around. Does he see very specifically the nun? Uh, no. You would see a church on the far end of town at the end of Main Street here. Hmm. Okay. I think Beck. just asks in his posture doesn't change at all he's completely straight backed shoulders tall and broad still holding the gun out in front of him uh, ready to fire again just says who's Barbados sure beats me first time hearing that name Lid, are you still holding Rick Ryder? Yeah, I'm like holding. <laughs> I'm holding both the heart and Rick by the foot. Is, is the heart out in the open or is it wrapped up? It's a, it's t it's tucked. It's like wrapped <laughs> up and tucked under my arm. All right, you gotta tuck. That's very important. Is Rick still intact? <laughs> yeah, Rick's still intact. Rick gets hit by the warning shot. We were all on that. <laughs> uh, you know what? Like, hold on. Give me one second here. Oh no. Uh, yes. Uh, Rick got hit by that warning shot, but he's out cold. Uh, he's just bleeding now. You got a whole leg. <laughs> you hit Rick. <laughs> I think he just doesn't respond to that. If you could see his face, you would be able to tell that he's wondering who the fuck is Rick, but uh, you you can't see his face clearly enough to, to put that together. Um... I'm gonna go. I. <laughs> <laughs> you, you gonna leave Rick out there? Or you gonna bring him back inside with you? I'll leave him. All right. Just dump <laughs> him on the ground, bleeding out. I don't have time for. I. I um, this isn't worth it. <laughs> it's not worth it. Fuck this. I think Beck watches him as he leaves, but Beck is going to walk towards the church first. Alrighty. So, Beck's gonna go ahead and exit the scene here and go off on his own little adventure. Meanwhile, back inside the tavern. Let's get that back on the screen. Oh, the atmosphere is much better in here. Thank God. <laughs> that was terrifying. <laughs> Back inside the tavern, uh, Lynn, you uh, come back in here. Do you care to share your experiences with uh, the others inside, or whatever? Uh, what I think they don't that, know won't hurt them. I think that the only thing Lynn does is like, is there a coyote guy? I I don't I don't remember seeing one around here. Everyone so, heard a gunshot, right? Yeah, everybody heard a gunshot. There's been a lot of gunshots this past month. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't bring that up. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you finish off Rick? I didn't. <laughs> Hell, you what? mean you, you didn't? 
I, I mean, he's out there. <laughs> what? Who'd you, what shoot? you want? I didn't shoot nobody. I'm asking that we have Coyote in town or something. Uh, you, you see how, 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 tall, how tall is Beck? Can I get a good gauge of like... Yeah, how tall I, was Beck? Yeah. Uh, Be- Beck is of relatively average height. Uh, uh, a little, it's a little guy, five. like just down here, just <laughs> he's five. Like he's exaggerates like five how short the six feet. <laughs> he just like exaggerates how short. He's like he's like down here, got a weird eye. Uh, I don't so, know if you can read or not. Uh, along with Conrad, a uh, small fox boy uh, came in to the tavern, and as you're giving this description, he pipes up and says. He had a weird eye. Did his face look burnt? Probably. Oh my god! His box car back! He's back from the dead! I gotta go see him! Probably no, should. No, he immediately no. runs outside. Well, anyways. <laughs> that answers that question. Box car who? Uh, anyone who wants can give me a common knowledge roll to see if you've heard legends about this guy. I am Super. sure I am not. Not a lot of newspapers out in the wild. Yeah, the, the last one oh. we had here turned into a tabloid and shut down. Anyways, he shot Rick. A very nearly unlearned information. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nick and no, Argo, you? don't think. You'll hurt yourself. <laughs> 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 this is why people always ask the bartender for gossip. <laughs> this is true. This man knows everything. All right, Nicodemus, you've heard plenty about Boxcar Beck. This was a legendary outlaw, so named for all the trains he'd unrobbed. Him and the carrying crew uh, even set themselves up a commune out here in the West uh, before it all burned down, and people thought he died during that. But uh, if he's back, he's back. Or maybe this is hell, and you just come down to join him. That boy said boxcar back? Can't be. Okay. <laughs> <I'll>... <laughs> All, right. All right. Yeah, can't be. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll tell y'all what, like, I'll paraphrase what we just got taught. All right. Uh, All right. You know, our brain is thing. just cooking and he's just thinking, like, they got train communists now? I've... Has Argo, like, come out of hiding at this no, point? No, he's still there. <laughs> oh, I love that we get the most loudmouth character and he's not able to talk. <laughs> realistically, <laughs> Argo on him. realistically I, he, probably he, was, stu- he probably stood up and then I, as you were leaving and then <laughs> fucking he, he, he thinks it's time to come out from behind the bar, hears a gunshot, then sees you coming back and just ducks right back in the same spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god all right so as y'all are discussing the 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 whereabouts of this wanted criminal scum boxcar beck in walks the sheriff and he says uh how how do y'all yeehaw um it, it it's about time that we round up a posse because we need to deal with something real quick what? Uh, we, we just need to round up everybody who's a body on account of the church is on fire. Oh. oh. <laughs> what? what? I was just there. Well, was it on fire when he was just there? Well, you know what? That's not important. We need to go make it not <laughs> on fire. <laughs> yeah. I, I really appreciate the help if you could lend a hand. Tell you what. Yeehaw. <laughs> Dang, Sheriff. My head still hurts. <laughs> You got buckets or anything? Um, I don't got buckets. You know, just grab some of these bottles here and we'll use them to put out the fire. The bottles of alcohol? Glance at Mortadella. Mortadella's like crossing her hands like, no, don't do that. (laughs) Uh, Nico doesn't even ask for anything. He just starts getting buckets and filling them with water. All right. So who would like to help go put out the fire at the church? I'll help. Conrad, I'll help too. All right, excellent. The toast has really stepped up his his building burning this season. 
really efficient. He's been here like what five minutes. <laughs> Gotta Say throw it. one I, out for the fans. <laughs> Arthur, did you say that you did you say that you were gonna help? No, I did not say anything. <laughs> I say I say all right. So I, I all right. I, I, I say it would be pretty damn heroic if the hero of Southball lend the hand. Wherever he, he is, was, <laughs> wherever he is. Yeah, you haven't seen him. I gotta thank him for something. Maybe we can stick him on boxcar back or whatever. <laughs> Imagine everyone's looking at the same location except Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then after you say that, oh, shit, it would be nice if he helped, Bertram loudly clears his throat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I guess God, we're not. God damn it. All right. Yes, I'm here. Hero oh. Fox. Fox. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> All right. How long have you been down there? Uh, no. <laughs> fire, Swint. gentlemen, it's Hear on me fire. Out. Hear me out. Boys, get uh, There we go. <laughs> no. Are you forcing me to hear you out? <laughs> oh, man. You heard him I'm, out real good. I'm persuading you with the no. <laughs> you While this what? is going on, Nico is just like, let's go, share. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, rounded up, our posse starts to head out uh, towards the church where they have been told uh, there's a fire brewing. Let's uh, let's head on over there. Oh Some no, Bruins here music. too. Oh no, Bruins on fire! On fire! Uh, <laughs> see, back to the church, and it's on fire now. Oh shit! <laughs> uh, all right. Does anyone have any practical firefighting experience? Yeah, I want, I want to say Conrad has some intuition about how to tackle it. What should I What should I roll to... Science, Mr. Science, Science Man. Let's go. Yeah, I'm going like, to target the correct part of the fire or something. <laughs> I don't know how uh, order, could, but let's go. Could Nico that, roll survival? Yeah, um, that'd, that'd be good, too. Oh. Damn. Damn, these are some good rolls. Uh, that was that. Uh, yeah, I was gonna propose like also rolling for survival by like tossing dirt on it using the buckets. Yeah, that's actually about the conclusion uh, Conrad's gonna come to. In th this sort of situation, in this environment, uh, you got sand and dirt all around. That's almost as good as water for putting out a fire. So even after your buckets are dry and empty, you can just refill them with dirt and keep going. Now, as you approach the church. You do see that gangly, medium height figure marching on into the church, undeterred by the flames. It is definitely that same figure that Lynn just encountered outside, inspecting the banner in the middle of town. Is he walking into the fire? <laughs> he sure is. God damn it. Has anyone seen Sister, oh, what's her name? Sister Alice? Sister Alice. S S Sister Alice? Oh, I hope she done got out of there along with the rest of the congregation what hold up in there waiting for the end of the world like. Do we see any of them outside of the church? You see nobody outside the church. Uh, in fact, you don't see any signs anyone has left the church, like no footprints leading away from it even. It's me we gotta go in there. Oh jeez, that oh, that's gonna be real dangerous. I'm I'm reckon. Already walking towards it. Oh, be careful! Yeehaw! Uh, Is God. the kid anywhere around here? Damn it, Lynn! <laughs> uh, what was that, Marty? Is the kid anywhere around here? Um, you do actually see uh, him standing off on the on the side, uh, observing, and he says. Oh, gee, that was him. That was Boxcar Beck. He's real. Oh, I wonder how many lawmen he's killed. <laughs> Argo is taking his shirt off. Ooh, okay. Because he's not going to really? ruin it. Really? Now? He's not going to ruin it. <laughs> it's a They're nice limited shirt. limited supplies. <laughs> you can't get another one of those here on the other side. <laughs> he's begrudgingly following Lin, and he's pissed that he went inside. <laughs> 
I think Nico is gonna look for the body. Um and maybe see if he can do a heal check to make sure that he's not bleeding out. Uh the body of uh, Rick Ryder? Yeah. Alright, so you're you're gonna do that. Um, Lynn and Argo are heading inside the burning building. Ar- Argo's um, following sneakily. Yeah, Con- Conrad's actually following Nico, by the way. He... Okay, so those two are going that way. What's Chance doing? That's a real good question. I mean, if two of them are going in to try to save people, I, I gotta see what's inside there. So, put on the goggles and wrap my handkerchief around my face and head on in. You know, you're well equipped for this. All right, and I assume that means uh, Argo is trying to remain undetected as he tails Lynn. Argo, yes, Argo is both trying to follow Lynn and also never be observed by Lynn. These are, these are not mutually exclusive desires, but they are a little bit in conflict. However, you do manage to pull it off with a roll like that. And let's take a look inside the church. We'll get Stilton out of here. It's the lack of shirt for bonus slinkiness. Yeah. Uh, the shirt has minus one stealth on it. That's, that's how they be. Let's see. Turn the fire on. It's all the damn folds. It's a nice <laughs> shirt. All right. Inside the church here. I just love that. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. I just love Good. that Ka knows me so well to know that my first action in the campaign would be to burn down the fucking church. I love this. <laughs> the fact love that this the energy. was prepared is simultaneously so flattering and the least surprising <laughs> thing that has ever happened. Uh, I love you too. You already, buddy. We're on the same wavelength. You already <laughs> area draw it. Like literally, like that, that church is coming down. Let's just go ahead and get out ahead of that. <laughs> All right, so those of you heading into the church see a very strange sight. It's a little hard to see with all the smoke inside and the flames, but you do see a very rotten interior. It looks like there's been a large crucifix erected in the back of the church. You see that mysterious stranger what rolled into town standing here looking up at the crucifix. Let me get a something on here. And upon the crucifix you see what surely used to be a goat. Oh. But you're not so sure that's what he is anymore. We're going to take our break there for right now. Oh! Oh my goodness. Nice, hell yeah. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Ooh.